good enough? Yeah. I'm no stranger to adversity. As nervous as I still get about racing, running has been my medicine, and towing the starting line is something I'll never get tired of. My relationship with racing has changed so much since I first started. I still love running fast, but I know it's not life or death. We all have a vision for how our life is going to go, but life is also full of uncertainty. It's just like, the cold air is hard for my abdomen because there's so many muscles that are like not normal yet. I get you, yeah. So when it gets, I just like, there's a chill, I don't, I don't I know. I know, it's a double barrel. Chill. Yeah, it's nice here, it's California. Yeah. I just, um, hey, um, obviously I was hoping for more, but uh, cool. I'm happy just to get one cool. under my belt. I'll be back. No, I'm fine. Sorry. Last July, I competed in the U.S. Olympic Trials. A few weeks later, I had a surgery to remove half of my liver along with a tumor. And three months after that, I started running again. Over the winter, I began training hard to reestablish myself as one of the top American runners with the goal of competing at the 2017 World Championships. In March, I had my first post-operation PET scan and was hoping for no cancer but the scan showed tumors in my liver. I miss my puppy. <laughs> we treat her like a child. We got her like her own personal babysitter, she sits at our condo and takes her everywhere with her. It's great, she has a great life. It's all about perspective. For me, running is important and it's my job and it's my passion. And just because I'm going through something hard doesn't mean I'm just going to give that up immediately. It might be easier for me to just sit on the couch and say I don't wanna run anymore. It might not go well, but I think it's worth doing even if it's not perfect. And I think that sometimes we're too quick to give up on the things that we love and the things that make us feel alive when something is you know, going wrong in our lives, but I just really feel strongly that we have to hold on to them. Originally, the schedule for the year was uh, more spread out, and then when we got the diagnosis, we weren't sure exactly when the treatment and was going to start and what it would be. So now the time schedule has moved up, and so it's changed the workouts a little bit. We have to add some intensity a little earlier than we wanted. Um, but she wants to race as many quality races as she can before the treatment begins. and. Um, then once the treatment does begin, we'll just roll with it and see if that, that can continue and, and she can get a qualifier for U.S. Nationals. And um, if she does that and goes to Nationals and is able to compete there, that'll be a good season. And if it goes beyond that, it'll be a great season.
Good job. Sorry. Oh, good job. That's a good one. That's real good. Oh. Very good. Yeah. Week by week, putting it together. Definitely. I definitely went to that was good. a place that was harder than my race the other day. <laughs> that was good. Physically. Essentially, we're going to Sloan Kettering just to get the expert opinion. There's a doctor out there named Dr. Ho, Alan Ho. He's kind of the world expert in adenoid cystic carcinoma. If anyone's going to cure this cancer, it's going to be him. He's running clinical trials. It's a meeting to say, what do we do cool. next? All right, sweetie. So you're going to New York tomorrow? I am, yeah. Okay. I am saying? a so, specialist? Yep. She, the, the, when we found out that she had cancer the first time we were in Arizona State, and and you know of course the whole team was there and they were just devastated and she was but she got up the next day and went and ran and ran a pr in the 1500 and that's just who she is i mean it's just like yeah okay well there's nothing i can do about it now so let's go and compete tomorrow and so it was you know she's always had that attitude she's she's a tough hombre you know i sent out an email to the girls um this fourth time around you know because it's obviously you know i this one, is, I think, has honestly hit a lot of us the hardest because it was just such a quick turnaround. And I think, you know, the first one, there was this gap and then there was the thyroid and then there was this long gap. And you're like, okay, like, everything's good and she's racing fast and she's trying to make the Olympics and, and all this stuff. And, and then the liver happened and you're like, oh, ugh. But then they took it out and you're like, okay, we're good. And then, you know, four or five months later, this is the closest. You know, this is where it's been rapid fire. And I think this is the one for a lot of us from the outside that have just been more of a punch to the gut. I'm 30 years old and I imagined possibly competing for another Olympic team and the way I've seen it is like I either want to be a competitive runner or I want to start a family and it sucks because potentially I could do neither of those things and so that's really hard because I don't know what comes next then. Cancer appointments aren't fun and I didn't get it. It's like not great news. My summer's gonna be feel, filled with cancer treatment, but but you're healthy and young. But it's good, but it was good news under the context of our situation. The statistics she gave us about people with yep. head and neck cancers or my specific cancer, adenoid cystic carcinoma, they, I mean, there's like some They're positive. Promising, yeah. There's some, it's not like chemo is a. It's not a cure, cure. but it can make things shrink it and can have an effect. keep things stable. And then we'll see, I mean, if this is what we go with, we'll do that and then they'll do another scan in a few months, see what's happening and uh, could be chemo for a while. Hopefully we get a response and there still other are the radiation too. techniques yeah. that are on the table yeah. at some point if I need to do them. The regimen, I mean, all the regimens have like a high risk of infertility, high-ish, but Not this- Not high, high. Okay, uh, gone, yeah. I mean, chemo kills like cells. Your ovaries are cells that are reproductive cells. Mm -hmm. So, but the cisplatin, regimen she's on isn't known and like someone who's young and healthy like a 30 year old woman it's not as likely to cause as high of infertility rates it can mm -hmm. i mean but i know but someone who had this chemotherapy and she thought she'd be infertile mm -hmm. she has a, a five-year-old <laughs> yeah. and honestly i am just trying to stay alive long enough to get the benefit of the new treatments that i think yeah. that they'll come out with
what one of the saddest things is? I'm trying not to be sad because it's so trivial. It's just hair, but I have looked forward to being a bridesmaid in Ladia and Mal's wedding so much. I know. And I'm gonna be bald. We can get you a super good looking wig. <laughs> I'm happy that I'm able to do a little bit of racing because I know basically once we started talking, it, he was like, you're gonna do four to six rounds of chemotherapy. These are, this is what you, I recommend. We've seen my recent scan, there's slight growth, but it's nothing that's like, immediately pressing. I'm not having symptoms. That's what I wanted, I guess. That's a best case scenario in a crappy situation. And it is crappy. I'm not getting a whole season. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be on chemo at USA's. I'm not going to London. Um, so it's all crappy, but you know, there is a silver lining. I get a couple races and I do get to come back from this big surgery this year, which that's what I really wanted. Uh, I wanted to show that that can be done. I don't, I'm not gonna be able to do like as much as I wanted with that, but I can be, getting to do a little bit is like awesome. So I, I'm hoping to find a new level of motivation and I just wanna find out how much fitness I have. I know it's not gonna be a PR, it's not. And that's okay, if I can just, get the most out of myself with what I've done in the last four months, I'll be happy with that. And as long as there's, Dr. Ho puts the, ho and ho. the hoe and hoe. <laughs> right. That's enough. That's enough, cut me off. I need to go, I need to get out of here. <laughs> I'm afraid you just got peed. What? <laughs> Stop. All right. Okay, all right. You wanna go run? <laughs> I guess you have to. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay. Knowing that I have three races, that's official. I know that I can dig deeper and I will find out how fit I am and I will make the most of it. I mean, my situation isn't normal and maybe my reaction's not normal, but I don't want to be normal. I, I want to challenge myself to get the most out of my life and my opportunities, even if it's not turning out the way I wanted at all. Tonight I will race the Oxy 1500, and on May 26th I will race the 1500 again at the Pre-Classic National Meet, which is on Friday night before the Diamond League. And then I will go to Boston for my last shot at running the US standard, which is 409.5, and that's a goal. Uh, if I can't hit that goal, the secondary goal would be to improve on my time that I currently have on the list, which is 411.8, I believe. So definitely want to improve on that. I have three shots starting tonight, basically, and I'm running, I'm racing once a week for the next two weeks, two weeks in a day and that's my season. I have two weeks to achieve what I want to and hoping to qualify for USA's and race in June. I'll start treatment on Monday, June 5th, and I will have a chemo infusion that week, the following week, and the next week will be an off week. That's USA's week. <laughs> and so I'm planning to race USA's during my first round of chemo. <laughs> Good. It's like so nice. Look at the flex. down, yeah. It's not. Hold on. My eyes. I feel like I just got to All I've been feeling lately is like nerves and anxiety heading into doctor's appointments and hearing back about scans. And I want to feel anxiety about something else. Something trivial. Something like racing. And I get to do that, at least for a couple more weeks, and I'm excited to feel like I'm going to throw up before I race. We're in hip number eight, great to have her on the track here. The 2014 USA Indoor 3K champion was an NCAA runner-up while in Minnesota, representing Brooks Dave Grunwald. On your mark. on the inside rail, so Vaughn now moving up on the outside, Lepardi and Magoo now into fourth, 
As they hit the bell at 58 over 303. 66 seconds left. Looking great. Through Wild and McCoy. Living Neon on the fourth. I'll catch you on the second lap. Okay. Lining up against Gabe is awesome. I think she's amazing. And it breaks my heart. But at the same time, like, she's, she's fine. She's doing fine. And um, I still want to beat her when I line up against her, you know? And I know she wants to beat me, and that's just how it is. Um, but as soon as the race is over, she knows I love her. And I think the whole running community is behind her. Um, yeah, she's just awesome. It hasn't been easy. Like, it has been up and down and like, it's been stressful. But I have, I'm always like getting excited about these races and I just have tried to believe in myself. I know I have it in me. It's just like finding out how to tap into it under the stress of my life right now. It's progress for me. There's just a lot of things going on in my mind and I think today was the first race where I didn't really think about my cancer or my situation when I was out there, which was actually a huge step in the right direction also. If I can like kind of separate those things, I think that's gonna help my racing, honestly. Because carrying that into the race, it's heavy and it's not gonna help me run fast. Um, I just, when I'm out there, I just wanna be in the race, and today is the first time I can honestly say I was in the race. <laughs> objective of me racing right now is to get the most out of myself with where I am right now. I don't have a whole entire summer of racing ahead of me and there's a lot of uncertainty about when I'll get to do races like this again. So I don't want to put too much pressure on myself because that is sort of a tough situation to race under. So I mainly just want to enjoy the experience because I don't know when I'll be back here. I put in a lot of hard work coming back from my surgery last August and it hasn't been the easiest road back to fitness, but I'm fit and tonight is all about like celebrating that and having fun and getting to be Gabe the professional runner for like this last few days. Thank you so much for expediting this for me. I appreciate it. I'm all good to go. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Looks good. I mean, the last month, two months, I think we started training midwinter and slow and steady 
we didn't know. I mean, we were training for August, essentially, but then you kind of compact everything. So it's a little bit of a stress, and it was hard, frustrating at first, but now she's kind of a runner where once things click, it's just like that instead of a slow climb. So Dennis has done a phenomenal job coaching her, getting her to kind of short-term peak fitness very quickly, and it's really gratifying to see everything come together really nicely. So I'm excited to see the times ahead. She loves running from, from the get-go. She's a, a big fan of it. And I think she, she gets normalcy from running. You know, it's like, okay, I have this terrible disease that's taking over my body and my mind. And rather than letting it control me, it's like, I'm gonna take control of my life still and I'm gonna go run. And I think that's, that's what she does. And I think that's what's so inspiring about her. Her qualifying for the US champs is, you know, it's something she's done 10 times in her career. But the fact that she can do that while fighting cancer is is amazing, you know. And you know, to me, we, we talked about it and said, you know, listen, Gabe, it doesn't matter how you do. It's just the fact that you're out there giving it a try is what's inspirational to people, you know. And I think the if she actually does it and qualifies for U.S. Champ, it's just going to perpetuate her story that much more and reach more people. And I think that's really what her goal is right now. You know, she knows she's not going to qualify for U.S. Champs and make the World Championship team and go win a gold at the Worlds, you know. It's, it's not feasible at this stage, but for her to go and just, just show up at that line at Nationals would be such an inspiration to so many people in this world, and I think that's what she's gunning for. It's, not, it's no longer about herself, it's about getting word out about her disease and, and helping inspire people. There are, there's little things in life to be enjoyed every day. And hopefully, my hope and his hope is that the days that I get through this will turn into weeks, which will turn into months and years of getting through this. And one day we'll wake up in our 60s and we'll have grandkids or be at our kid's wedding or something. Um, that's the hope, that one day at a time I'll get through this. Yeah, I'm going to meet Devin to me. I'm, I'm a professional runner and a four-time cancer survivor. I'm still in the fight. I had treatment ahead of me this summer and um, I'm really just trying to hold on to running because it's gotten me through so much. But it's been tough. I had a big surgery last August um, with my recurrence uh, of adenoid cystic carcinoma. It's a rare cancer. Lots of rare cancers out there that don't have cares. Mine's one of them, so I'm just hoping I can find a treatment that uh, will help me out. And we can't hope with wish you the best in everything. It's amazing Thanks. to see you here with the scar, but you're yeah. competing. Thanks. This is your month. Enjoy. We yeah. look forward to you getting full recovery, okay? Thanks so much, Liz. Thanks. You got it. All right, Rick. Inspire. <laughs>